In chapter 12, we'll be discussing the ANOVA, which is an analysis of variance. So we'll be able to compare the variance of two populations. We'll also learn how to construct an ANOVA table that'll allow us to compare three or more means. And we'll learn to do it manually, but we'll also learn to do it in Excel. When we're working with the ANOVA, we will be introduced to a new statistic, the F statistic. Now the F statistic is similar to the t distribution in that it does use degrees of freedom. It will never be a negative value, but it can equal zero. And as I mentioned, we're going to use the ANOVA to compare the variances of two populations or to compare the means of two or more samples. And we'll also learn, as I said, to create an ANOVA table both manually and using Excel. All right, we'll start working with the ANOVA in comparing two population variances. So we'll go back to our hospital administrator, Keisha, that we've talked about in previous chapters here. And she's still concerned on making sure that her patients are as satisfied as possible. And one of the comments that keeps coming up is how long it takes them to actually get discharged. The nurse will come in and say, okay, it's time to go, but then they have to wait for the doctor. And once the doctor actually releases them, then they can finally leave. And so they're saying that it just takes too long from the time the nurse says, okay, pack up your belongings to when the doctor actually releases them. So she's decided to take a sample and compare the variance or the dispersion in the times that it takes for patients to be released by their doctors before noon and those after lunch or afternoon. Now she's going to use the five-step hypothesis testing procedure, but she will use the ANOVA and the F statistic to do that. Keisha went a little bit out of order in her five-step hypothesis testing process and went ahead and conducted a survey. She surveyed 12 patients that were released in the morning and nine patients that were released after lunch. And she asked them how long they waited to be discharged. And so he, here we see the results in this table. Uh, we have the mean in the morning of 50.91, the mean in the afternoon of 32 minutes. We have a variance and we also have the standard deviation. And so now we'll go ahead and go through the hypothesis testing procedure to see if there really is a difference in the variance. All right, so now Keisha is ready to begin the official five-step hypothesis testing procedure. And step one is to state the null and the alternate hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the release, the discharge times between the morning discharges and the afternoon discharges are equal. The alternate hypothesis is that there is a difference, not necessarily shorter or longer, but just a difference. All right, the level of significance, she has decided to use the 0.02 level of significance. This gives her a 2% chance of making a type one error. Number three, determine the test statistic. Well, because she's comparing variances and working with the ANOVA, she will use the F statistic. All right, next step, step four, is to determine the critical value. Well, we're using the F statistic, and it's a two-tailed test, which means she is looking for 0.01 in each tail. Now, even though the F distribution does not support negative values, we'll still treat this as a two-tailed test. And I mentioned that the F distribution uses degrees of freedom, but it actually uses two degrees of freedom, a numerator and a denominator. The numerator will be the sample size with the largest variance, and the denominator will be the sample size with the smallest. So the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the denominator are n minus 1, so that we have 11 for the numerator and 8 for the denominator, and we'll see how that works on a table in the next slide. Here on the screen, you see an example F distribution table. Uh, we have the 0.01 level of significance. We have columns for the denominator and rows for the numerator. And so we have a denominator of 11. Remember, which is the largest variance in minus one and also the numerator of eight. And we end up with a critical value of 5.734. All right, Keisha is now ready for step number five to take a sample, compute the test statistic and make a decision. Well, she's already taken a sample, computed the variances and the means of those samples. So the next step then is to simply compute the F stat. We do this very simply by taking the larger variance divided by the smaller variance, the numerator divided by the denominator. When we do that, we end up with an F stat of 2.393 which is smaller than the critical value that we determined. So once again, she is going to conclude that she cannot reject the null hypothesis at the 0.02 level of significance. Now, the critical values of F do decrease 
substantially as the degrees of freedom increase. In other words, with a larger sample size, Keisha's results may have been different. Well, now we're going to be moving to creating an ANOVA table. And the purpose of this is to compare three or more means. We've used the t-test when we want to compare two sample means, and that works well. However, when you want to add an additional mean or more, it becomes very tedious to work with the t-stat. The ANOVA actually is a better approach. Uh, it is fairly complex, but uh, it's, it's nothing that we can't do manually, and we'll step through it. Uh, it's also very easy to do it in programs like Excel. But the final result of the ANOVA table will be an f-stat that we can use to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. As I mentioned, we'll be computing an ANOVA table manually just so you can understand how it works. Uh, in real life, though, you'll probably want to use Excel to get done a lot quicker here. So if we're looking at the ANOVA table, uh, we see some terms that we maybe haven't seen before. Uh, we see SST. The SS in this case stands for sum of squares. So we're going to have the sum of squares for the uh, treatments, the sum of squares for the error, and the sum of squares for the total. We have K, which is the categories or how many different means we're looking at. Um, and we'll go ahead and step through this and it'll make a lot more sense as we continue on building the ANOVA table manually. All right, let's go ahead and set up the scenario here. Uh, Keisha compared the variances of the, the patients that were released in the morning versus the afternoon, and she could not reject the null hypothesis. So this time she's determined to compare morning discharges, afternoon discharges, and weekend discharges, and she wants to see if there's going to be a difference in the mean waiting times for these populations. And again, the key word here is mean as opposed to variance. So she has come up with the following sample. Uh, we see the different waiting times here for the morning, the afternoon, and the weekend. Okay, Keisha is now ready to go through the five-step hypothesis testing procedure with the three or more means, which in this case are three. So, number one, step one, state the null and the alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that all three means are equal. There is no difference in any of the means. The alternate hypothesis is that they are not equal. Select a level of significance for step two. She will once again select the 0.02 level of significance, giving her a 2% chance of making a type 1 error. Determine the test statistic, which is step three. Uh, she's going to construct an ANOVA table, and that does use the F distribution. Okay, step four in Keisha's five-step hypothesis testing procedure is to determine the critical value. This is a two-tail test, so Keisha is going to be looking for 0.01 in each tail, which means we're going to use the F distribution with the 0.01 level of significance. The degrees of freedom are determined a little bit differently. The numerator in this case is K, which is the number of categories or populations that we're looking at, in this case, three. So the numerator will be three minus one or two. The denominator will be n minus k. So altogether, there were 31 individuals sampled, and we have three categories, so the denominator is going to be 28. So degrees of freedom, numerator 2, denominator 28. And we'll go ahead and use the table to look up the critical value for 2 for the numerator and 28 for the denominator at the 0.01 level. We'll see that table on the next slide. All right, so as we can see on the table, in the 0.01 table, the degrees of freedom, numerator 28, denominator 2, we end up with a critical value of the f-stat of 5.453. All right, we're at step number five. Take a sample, which is already done, compute the test statistic, and make a decision. So bear with me a little bit as we construct the ANOVA table manually. Our first step in constructing an ANOVA table is to compute the grand mean, which is the mean of all the sample means. And so you can see on the screen here, we have the mean of each sample, the morning, the afternoon, and the weekend. And we take the mean of those means, which we call the grand mean, and we come up with 47.613. Well, we computed the grand mean, but if you look at the ANOVA table, you'll notice that it does not appear on the ANOVA table as a standalone, but it is essential in computing the next thing, which we're going to compute, which is the SS total, sum of squares total. And you can see the formula for that is simply summing up x minus the grand mean for each value, and we square that up. And we'll go ahead and do that computation on the next slide. 
All right, to compute the SS total, we subtract the grand mean from each value and square it. So you'll notice that we have the column for morning, a column for afternoon, a column for weekends. We've taken each value for the first uh, X in morning, 60, and we subtract 476129 from that, and we square it. We do that for each value, and then we sum them. We sum the squared differences. And then, of course, we add the three together, sum them all, and we end up with a sum of squared totals of 9923.3548. So that's the first value that we can place on the ANOVA table, the SS total. All right, we're starting to build the ANOVA table. We've already computed the degrees of freedom in the numerator and the denominator. We can fill those in. And now we've also computed the SS total. And so we put that value in and we're ready now to build the rest of the ANOVA table. All right, our next step in creating the ANOVA table is to create the sum of squares associated with error. And we do this by taking each value and subtracting it from its mean. And then we square it and then we sum them up. And when we sum up all of the differences, we then have the SSE. Now, that's a good explanation, but let's go ahead and see how it works with an example on the next slide. All right, so here's a worksheet to show you how we compute the SSE. So we take each value, we'll start with the morning, each value, x, subtract from that the mean of that particular sample. So the morning sample mean was 50.91667. So to start with, we take 60, we subtract the mean, and we square that. We do that for each value in the morning. We also do it for the afternoon using the mean of the afternoon values and weekend, and also use, of course, the mean for the weekend values. We sum up the differences between each value and its mean squared. Then we add all three of those sums together, and we end up with the SSE that we can now add to the ANOVA table. In this case, it's 6930.472. Well, once we've computed the SS total and the SSE, we can now construct the ANOVA from just those two calculations. So we've already computed the SS total and the SSE. We filled those in. We see the SS total is 9923.355 and the SS error is 6930.472. Well, the sum of squares for treatments, SST, are the difference between those two. So we have the total minus the error, which gives us the sum of squares for treatments of 2992.883. All right, we go over to the degrees of freedom. We've already completed that. Uh, we have the numerator and the denominator. Next, we're going to compute the mean square column. And the mean square for treatments is the SST divided by K minus one. That's going to equal the mean square for treatments. Well, we have the value for treatments of 2992.883 divided by K, which is the number of categories, the number of samples, mean samples in this case, two, we end up with a mean square for treatments of 1496.442. Then we're going to compute the mean square for error pretty much the same way, a little bit slightly different in the formula here. We take the SSE minus N, excuse me, divided by N minus K. That gives us the mean square for error. So we have the 6930.472 divided by 31 minus three, the total number in the sample minus the three categories gives us the mean square for errors of 247.517. Finally, we're able to compute the F statistic here. The F statistic is simply the MST divided by the MSE. So we have the 1496.442 divided by 247.517, giving us an F stat of 6.046. There you have an ANOVA table. Really wasn't that bad once we had those two computations and then we had some simple computations after that. Once we finally constructed the ANOVA table and computed the F-STAT, we can make our decision. The F-STAT that we computed was 6.046. That is larger than the critical value that we determined from the uh, F-distribution table of 5.453. So at the 0.02 level of significance, we can conclude that the means are not the same. 
Well, now that we've learned to compute an ANOVA table manually, um, in real life, we might want to use something like Excel to do it. And Excel does it very easily. Excel's data analysis feature has the ANOVA single factor. And so that would be the first step to choose data analysis and then ANOVA single factor. The next step is to select the alpha level, in this case 0.01, because we're dividing it by two, we're doing a two-tailed test. Uh, I have an input range, and this does match the Excel file that you can download on my website. So um, the, select the input range, put in the alpha value, and uh, then you can determine where you'd like the output to be, either on the same worksheet as your data or in a new worksheet. Right after you've clicked OK, uh, Excel will produce an ANOVA table. I do want to point out just a couple of things that uh, Excel names SST between groups and the SSE within groups. But we can see that we have an SS total, um, the SSE and the SST, same values we came up with, the degrees of freedom, the mean square, and the F. And notice it also gives you the p-value and the critical value. So it saves you lots of time to use Excel, but at least you know how to do it manually if you ever need to. All right, the highlights for chapter 12. We use the ANOVA to compare the variance of two populations or compare the means of three or more samples. The ANOVA, if we're comparing two populations variances, we simply take the larger variance divided by the smaller variance. We learned how to construct an ANOVA table. Um, we saw some of the terminology. We saw that it is rather complex for the actual steps refer to the chapter. And of course, my ending word of advice here for ANOVA tables is whenever possible, use Excel. And remember, all of these lessons are based on my textbook, Surviving Statistics, which is available on Amazon. And do remember to check out my website for downloadable files, calculators, and other resources.